Hello, party people and course creators, wherever you are around the world. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Course Creators Challenge live here on Facebook. All week we're going to be here. That's right. Every day, Monday to Friday or Sunday to Thursday, if you're in the US at the same time, same channel every day. Hey, I'm super, super excited to be here and I hope you are too. Before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping Uh, If you would like to leave a comment on the live stream and you would like me me to be able to bring your comments up on the screen, you need to give StreamYard, which is the software I'm using to go live, you need to give StreamYard explicit permission to do that. So there'll be a link uh, in the post here. I think it's just StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Just click that link and give StreamYard permission for me to uh, grab your comments and bring them up on the screen. Uh, so, uh, here we go. Just like Stephen Palfrey says live midnight here in the UK, Stephen Palfrey, you're an absolute legend. And he has, uh, probably given StreamYard permission to do that. Now caveat that only applies if you're watching this in the digital Mavericks Facebook group. Of course, we are live streaming to two destinations at the same time because of the magic of the interwebs. We are live in the digital Mavericks Facebook group, and we are also live on our Facebook page. Now, that does matter because I'm going to give you a an amazing template for a workbook, uh, and I'm going to give you that uh, in a moment. Uh, but the, the way that you can only get that if you are watching this on the Facebook page, I'll give you clear instructions on that in a moment. But before we dig in, I want to find out a little bit about you guys. So please tell me, where are you in the world? Tell me which country you are in right now. Where are you in the world? What country are you in right now? Leave me a comment. Just drop the name of the country that you are in in the comments so that I can get uh, an idea of who's who in the zoo and uh, where you guys are watching from. I know Carl Godfrey is here. Hey, Carl. How you doing, my friend? Carl is in the UK. Uh, Yes, Carl is in the UK. Uh, Wow, Yogesh is here from Delhi in India. Wow, 4.30 a.m., uh, in Delhi, in India. You're an absolute legend, Yogesh, <laughs> up and about, nice and early. Aaron Marquez is here from the USA. These comments are moving too quick. I can't keep up. Aaron Marquez is here from the USA. Awesome. Hey, Al- hey, uh, Aaron. Alex Alex Baccarella, you superstar, Alex Baccarella. Where are you? That comment's just skipped pie. It's moving too quick. The comments are going too quick. Alex Baccarella is here from Sydney in Australia. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Uh, glad you could be with us here. Lisa Hewitt, is here from Brisbane in Queensland. Kevin Roberts is here from Atlanta, Georgia in the USA. Hey, Kevin, my friend, how are you? Keith Eldridge is here from Japan. Hey, Keith, how you doing, buddy? Good to uh, see you here. Bill Wolf is here from the USA. Susan Bailey Weaver is here from the USA. Ah, Sarah Davenport is here from Australia. Hello, Sarah. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Paulina Harpy is here from Vanuatu. We have uh, Anish Pasi from India. Kelvin from Sydney, Michael Rump from Germany, Rory Flynn from Geelong, Victoria, your neighbour. Now, I heard a rumour that you guys were allowed to go to the pub and have a beer with your friends, and I'm not happy because we're still in lockdown here in Melbourne. Looking forward to the restrictions being relaxed a little bit uh, over the coming weeks. Jamie Hill is here from Wisconsin in the USA. Steve Benton is here from Traverse City in MI. Is that Michigan, MI, or is it Minnesota? I think it's MI. I think Minnesota's MN. Uh, Jason McCarta is here from Des Moines in Iowa. Uh, it's taken me 47 years to figure out how to pronounce that, uh, that city, Des Moines. Uh, Talio is here from San Francisco. Kaz Walter is here from Lake Macquarie in New South Wales. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. Amy Hall is here from San Diego, one of my favorite places on the planet. Lucky you, Amy Hall. Good on you. Zach Stepek is here from the US. Hey, Zach. All right. Awesome. Cool, cool. So, Uh, Let me give you some instructions here and let me also give you a bit of a heads up on what's coming this week. First things first, we are a little bit crazy here. So we are going to give away an iPad Pro this week. That's right. We are giving away an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil so that you can draw on your iPad. If you've been following me for any time, you will know how much I love drawing on the iPad. I think it's a great way to communicate, whether it's coaching, teaching, or in sales. Drawing on the iPad is a great form of communication. 
super engaging and you can get a lot uh, communicated very quickly. So we're giving away an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil this week. Now, it's just going to be the base level iPad Pro. It's not going to be the fully pimped up one with the tinted windows and the subwoofer and the uh, mag wheels. It's just going to be the base level iPad Pro uh, with an Apple Pencil. And here's the deal. In order to win that, it's a fairly loose competition and it's fairly subjective. Um it basically, the iPad Pro is going to go to the most engaged course creator for the week. So what that means is, yes, you've got to turn up every day. You've got to be here every day and make an appearance every day. Otherwise, you don't qualify. And you have to be here on Friday when we make the announcement. Otherwise, it's like a meat raffle at the RSL. If you're not here, then we draw another ticket and it goes to someone else, okay? Um, and most engaged means it's not just about turning up and saying hello and liking and sharing with your friends and doing and leaving comments. We actually want you to take action. So it's going to go to the course creator who takes the most action and has either the biggest win or is just the most engaged this week. All right. So they are the rules for giving away the iPad Pro. Um, I hope we don't get um, uh, blocked off Facebook for running a uh, competition with pretty loose rules. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Now, the other instruction I need to give you is this. Uh, in order to get the workbook, we are giving away our workbook template, which is fully editable in Canva because Canva is free and the fully editable template that we're going to give you, you can just literally load into your free Canva account and start editing it. I'm going to show you how to do that tomorrow and I'm going to show you how to start building worksheets tomorrow for your course and why worksheets are important. But here are the instructions. For those of you who are, watch who are watching this in the Facebook group, I love you and we love this group and it's amazing. So please stay in the group. But what you do need to do is you will need to go to our Facebook page and have a look at one of our course creator live streams, like the one that's going on right now, okay, at facebook.com slash WP Elevation, and leave a comment with the word workbook, and we'll send you your free workbook template via Facebook Messenger. It doesn't work in the group, unfortunately, because we can't scrape comments out of the group, because, you know, people want their privacy and all that kind of stuff. So we can't do it in the group. We have to do it on the page, all right? So go to uh, facebook.com slash WP Elevation. Just leave a comment, workbook, uh, anywhere on the live stream, on any of the live streams this week. Leave a comment, workbook, and we will ping you in Facebook Messenger and we will deliver the workbook, okay? Then come back here and watch it in the group. That would be my advice. Uh, Tina Hughes is waving to Troy and the team from Pandanus Beach near Brisbane. Thanks, Tina. We're not allowed to go to the beach just yet here in Melbourne because uh, we're still in lockdown. So thanks for rubbing it in. Um, lots of workbook comments coming through from Lisa, from Yogesh, from Lee, from uh, Tiki Dola. Hey, Tiki, Tiki the Dola. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Jamie Hill, Helena Denley, uh, Alex, uh, Sarah Kugel, and lots of people leaving the word workbook. Awesome. Cool. So you're all going to get the workbook delivered to you via Facebook Messenger. All right, kids. So let's talk about what's coming up this week. It's a super, super exciting week. We're going to be talking all about online courses this week. And uh, more importantly, we're going to get you some major traction this week. I want to see some big wins this week. I want to hear some success stories. And I know that every single person watching uh, this live stream, you wouldn't be here if you didn't already know that you were going to create and launch your very own online course unless you're completely bored in lockdown and you have nothing else to do. But you wouldn't be here if you didn't know you were going to do this. So my job is to get you some traction, is to make it easy for you, uh, get you up and about uh, fast, and then um, let you know what your next steps are. So let's talk about today, day one. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the opportunity of why you should be turning your expertise into a highly lucrative online course. And I'm actually going to get you started. And I'm going to set you a challenge by the end of today and give you some homework. Of course, you will all turn up tomorrow having done the homework and you'll start earning points towards that iPad Pro. Day two, how to create the ultimate workbook and use it as the sales and marketing engine for your online course. Hmm, a little bit meta here because we're actually doing the same thing as we reveal how to do it, we're doing it with you. So I hope it's not too weird. Uh, but tomorrow is all about creating the ultimate workbook for your course. Um, so make sure you get that template. Uh, day three is a case study, how to use online courses to build your tribe and create an amazing lifestyle with my good friend, Dana Molstaff from Southern California. She is gonna join us live. It's gonna be a deep dive Q and A. She's an amazing uh, tribe leader and course creator. 
She's the co-creator of one of our courses here at WP Elevation, and she's built an amazing business and lifestyle out of uh, basically sharing her expertise online. So that's day three, which is Wednesday here in Australia, Tuesday afternoon if you are in California, and you can figure out the rest of the time zones regard, you know, depending on where you are in the world. Day four uh, is another case study with my good friend Dave Foy, who some of you will be very familiar with, uh, and it's really how to use your expertise to create and launch multiple online courses. Now, the big thing I want to talk to Dave about is he teaches a lot of the stuff that he teaches, you can go find on YouTube. So I just want to bust this myth on on Thursday, Australian time, or Wednesday if you're in the States, I want to bust this myth. How can you generate revenue through an online course where basically what you're teaching can pretty much be found on YouTube? Now, I'm not trivializing what Dave teaches at all, but I want to unpack that. And Dave is in the UK and has agreed to sit up until past midnight to join in this conversation with us because he is that passionate about helping other people uh, learn how to do what he's done. And then day five, I'm going to reveal the entire course creator's blueprint and show you how you can use it to launch your first or next course. So if you already have launched online courses, awesome. Uh, Hopefully, I'm going to give you some cheats and some hacks and some uh, techniques and strategies to uh, enable you to launch your next course uh, quicker and hopefully make it more successful. Awesome. So uh, lots of comments here, which is excellent. You guys are super engaged, which is great. Uh, keep it going. All right. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the the numbers here, right? The online education industry will be a $325 billion industry by the year 2025. Online courses are infinitely scalable because you make it once and you can sell it 10,000 times. And the gratitude you get from your students is absolutely addictive. I've the reason I keep doing what I do, regardless of the revenue streams, is because the gratitude that I get every day when I wake up from our students is just like a drug, and it has become something that is just integral to the work that I do. Um, so there's just a few reasons why I think online courses are a great business model. Ray Miladoni is on the call. Hello, Ray. How are you, my friend? He's dropped the word workbook, and so has Simon Kelly. I bet you those guys are just testing out my automations. Let me know if it doesn't work. Uh Also, just want to give a quick shout out to some of the people who have inspired me over the years to keep continuing to create courses. Some of these names might be familiar. Uh, Of course, there is Marie Folio from B School, one of the biggest online course creators on the planet. Uh, Amy Porterfield from Courses That Convert, Webinars That Convert. Uh, Pat Pat Flynn from the Smart Passive Income Podcast has his own courses. Of course, Dana Molstaff, she's going to hate me for using that photo, but I couldn't resist when I found it. Brendan Bashard, the first online course I ever bought was from him, cost me $2,000. Dave Foy, of course, he's coming up on Thursday, uh, one of our co-creators here. Kim Barrett is also one of our co-creators. He's created the Facebook Ads Accelerator course. And the wonderful Christina Romero, who has gone on and had great success with her WP Care Market course. She started out here at WP Elevation. Uh, Marie Forleo is an eight-figure-a-year business. Last I heard, she's doing over 20 million bucks a year in revenue from online courses. It's mind-boggling. I'm pretty sure Amy Amy Porterfield is also now over 10 mil a year. I think that's the last I heard. Uh, not sure about the rest of them, but I know that they're all multiple six, if not seven-figure-a-year course creators. Uh, it's an incredible business model, and I do actually believe that now more than ever is the perfect time to be pulling the trigger on this, and here's why. Internet usage is up by over 70%, of course, because of the pandemic. We're all stuck at home. Ad costs have plummeted. I'll talk about that in a moment, but the, the costs of running ads on the internet have just absolutely plummeted through the floor. So it's your time to get paid for your expertise because more than ever, people are looking for leadership because of what's going on in the world right now, people are actually looking to someone to come to them and say, hey, here's a plan for you for the next 90 days or the next 12 months, and he, and to give them something really positive to focus their energy on. So I absolutely believe, and this is why we're doing this now. We are doing this now because now is the time to turn your expertise into an online course. This is, apart from, uh, of course, for those of you that don't know, what we do at WP Elevation is we produce courses for web design freelancers and digital marketing agencies to help them run their business. And apart from those questions, this is the number one question we get asked. How do you take your knowledge and turn it into an online course? And how do you guys consistently continue to launch successful course after successful course? And so I just decided uh, in probably July or August this year, probably probably mid to late July, I went, you know what? 
I'm just going to package everything up into a into a training and roll it out so that we can have that conversation because I see so many mistakes people are making and I want to prevent you from making those mistakes, which I'm going to talk about in a moment because I've made a lot of them, if not all. Um, so uh, here we go. Why don't, why don't we just di- why don't we actually just dig into this a little bit? Let me just pull up my uh, my prompt here uh, just to be completely transparent. I just wanted to, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Hope I'm hoping that this will prevent you from doing some of the things that I've done. Because here's here's the number one mistake I see people make, right? People get stuck when it comes to creating an online course. And there are two reasons people get stuck. The first reason is they're not sure what to put in the course. They're like, well, we're going to make this online course about, you know, playing guitar. I'll use Lance as as the example. Uh, By the way, Guitar courses are very lucrative if you get them right. Um, so they're, they're like, all right, well, I'm going to put the course together to teach people how to play guitar. And you go, cool. Well, what am I going to put in the course? That's the first place people get stuck. The second place people get stuck is, well, why will someone pay me to learn what I'm going to teach them when they can just go to YouTube and find a lot of this information for free? And it's true. If you took any of our courses, you could take most of our courses and break them down and go and like research the individual lessons, right? On YouTube or Google and probably figure a lot of this stuff out yourself. It's totally true. I mean, you know, I've been saying this for years. There's really not much original since the Roman empire, right? It's all been done. Uh, What I'm going to share with you though, throughout this week, hopefully will help you understand why people buy online courses and don't just go and research stuff on YouTube. And in fact, why people will buy an online course from you specifically. So let me just tell you a little bit about my background here. In 2012, I launched my first online course and it was an epic failure. It was called The New Business Blueprint. And it was under the brand Fuel HQ. And it was designed to help web freelancers and digital marketers uh, create new business and, and generate more clients, right? And I'm still doing the same thing, you know, eight, nine years later, we're just doing it in a completely different way. We have a completely different approach and it's much more successful now. This course though, the new business blueprint course was an awesome course. We had with tons of super helpful content and frameworks, templates, worksheets, professionally shot videos, uh, swipe files. We even had, are you ready for it gang? We even had this amazing logo that I think I designed in Keynote. Here we go. You ready? I'm going to reveal it. Oh yeah, baby. Fuel HQ, the new business blueprint. There's the worksheet. Worksheet number one, mapping your network, where I was basically teaching freelancers to write down who they know and then find out what they do and who they know as a way of extending their network. We spent, my business partner and I spent an entire weekend in the studio. It was a long weekend, actually. I clearly remember it was the Australia Day long weekend because it was hot. The Australian Open tennis was on and we wanted to go and see that. But we were in a studio for four days producing the lessons and about two weeks editing it all together and publishing it on a member's website with the fancy workbooks and the intros and the outros. And it looked amazing. And we were so proud of it. We set up a Facebook group uh, way back when I think it we were like it, Facebook groups weren't even a thing back in 2012. And we put the launch dates in our calendar. Uh, we wrote out our entire email sequence for the launch and we programmed it in Aweber that we were using back then. And we hit publish and we were super, super excited. It was our first online course. And when launch day came around, we were ready for our big payday. We were like, this is it, man. We are going to like do a a six-figure launch. We were super pumped. We had 8,500 email subscribers in our email list. So we had quite a big email list, right? A few problems with that, which I'll talk about in a moment. So the first email went out to our 8,500 email subscribers and... Crickets. Nothing happened. Nothing. Not a thing. Not a brass razoo, right? And so we logged into Aweber to make sure the email actually went out, and it did. We sent a couple of test emails to ourselves, went, yep, yep, email's working. We checked the links in the emails. Yep, they worked. We clicked on the link. It went to the sales page for the course. We're like, yep, this all works. We checked the checkout form. Yep, I even think we put through a test transaction. Yep, it's all working. What's going on? We waited and waited and waited. And eventually, sometime in that first 24 hours, we made a sale. It was $197, the course, right? And we made a sale. We were like, yes, it works. This is it. We're off to a slow start, but now we're in the big league, baby. 
and we waited some more and we waited some more. And then eventually we called each other on Skype and we're like, what happened? What's going on, man? Like, we've worked so hard on this. What's the deal? And our cart was open. The course was open for seven long, painful days. And in that seven days, we made five sales of $197 each, which isn't even, not even a thousand bucks. And one of our customers logged into the Facebook group. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, now, I'll tell you a bit of a story about that one customer who logged into the Facebook group because we're still friends. So what went wrong? Well, a lot, actually. Nothing technical went wrong and there was nothing wrong with the course. The course was amazing. It still is. It's still buried in our archives somewhere and we give it to our members. And they go through and when they join one of our courses, we're like, oh, by the way, go check this out that we did eight years ago. And they're like, this is actually a really good course. I'm like, I know. Why was it such a failure? Why was it such an epic failure? Well, what we've learned over the years is that the reason this course was such an epic failure is because we built something that we thought our audience wanted and we were wrong. The epic, this, this epic failure of this first course damaged my confidence so much that it actually took me three years, over three years. That was January 2012. My next course I launched in September 2015, which was a multiple six-figure launch in September 2015. So uh, it took me that long to get the confidence back up to go out there and do it again, yeah? So I'm just, I'm telling you a warning story here because I don't want you guys to make the same mistake that we make, okay? That we made. The world wasn't ready, says Simon Kelly. Yes, no warming up of the audience. Yes, correct, Tina Hughes, and a bunch of other things that went wrong. Uh, <laughs> Facebook user just goes, Troy Dean, brah. <laughs> uh, Tiki Dollar says, YouTube University is too time consuming. Well, there's something in that, Tiki, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Absolutely, YouTube University is too time consuming. Um, Angie, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, what platform is most recommended for courses? Because this is the other question. This is the other place that people get stuck, in the tech, right? And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. In fact, later this week, I'm going to reveal my, my chosen tech stack in 2020. What is my chosen tech stack for launching new courses in 2020? It is so, so simple that you won't believe me, okay? You'll be, you'll be horribly disappointed in my recommendation, Angie, uh, because it just doesn't matter, okay? So here's fast forward to today. <clears throat> it's not all doom and gloom, by the way. Fast forward to today, we have a multiple six-figure a year business and we've generated over $10 million in revenue from online courses. So quite a turnaround. The process we use to create and sell courses today is completely the opposite of what we did back in 2012. And for the first time, I'm sharing this process with you guys in our new training called the Course Creators Blueprint. And I'll give you more information about that on Friday coming up. So what I want to do now, though, is I want to dive in a little bit and find out what course you guys are planning on launching. What course are you guys planning on launching? Just let me know in the chat. What course are you planning on launching? Or actually, not even planning. What course are you launching? What course are you going to launch? Just let me know in the uh, comments. Ray Miladoni says, yes, the mistake is you built it for them, not with them. Exactly, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Angie says, Troy Dan, I could never be disappointed. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so what course are you launching? Uh -huh. uh, Jason Westbrook says, sorry, my name isn't registered, but I've made a couple of comments. It's Jason Westbrook all the way from the USA. Hey, Jason. All right. Uh, Sean Michael Smith says, the six-figure stylist course. Now, a bit of insight, I do believe Sean Michael Smith's wife has a hair salon and he does the digital marketing and he's absolutely killing it. I believe that's right. Six-figure stylist course, love it. Uh, Facebook user says Photoshop retouching. That's what happens when you don't give StreamYard permission to grab your name and your photo. Uh, Photoshop retouching. Uh, Zach Stepek says agile for agencies. Ooh, like it, like it a lot. Richard Torben says script writing, love it. Uh, here we go. Chris Sweeney says, start your business from scratch for new entrepreneurs. Love it, Chris. Teach others how to build online course. Ha, ha, ha. Dawn Larson, how to find your ideal girlfriend. Ooh, interesting. How to paint on silk, says Tina Hughes. Wow. 
I have a website accessibility course and I'm going to launch an accessible branding course. Love it, Colleen Gratzer. Warren Denley says, website development creation for designers and VAs. Love it. Uh, the MailChimp, here we go. Who, who's this? Who's this? Where is it? Where did that go? The MailChimp roadmap, says Amy Hall. Love it. MailChimp's email marketing software for those, uh, if you don't know it. Uh, do, 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 do. Skill to freedom, how to turn your skill into an online freedom business. There we go. How to set up, build, and run Google Ads, says Jamie Hill. E-commerce empire, says Simon Kelly. Nick Cree from web design freelancer to leveraged business. Love it, Nick. How to sell digital marketing services, says Jamie Hill. Beautiful. All right. Great. So lots of good, uh, lots of good ideas here. Uh, love it. Okay, cool. So let's dive in. Uh, and just a quick reminder, I'm just giving you a quick reminder here about the workbook, all right? If you leave the comment workbook in this group, you're not going to get the workbook on Messenger. So you've got to go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WP Elevation and leave a comment with the word workbook to get your free workbook template via Messenger. Now we're going to dive into some stuff. I'm going to start giving you some homework. Is that all right? Are you guys ready for some homework? If you're ready for, if you're ready for some homework, I can't even speak, I'm that excited. If you're ready for some homework, just drop a yes in the comments. If you're ready for some homework and you're ready to actually start getting some stuff done and you want to get your hands dirty, drop a yes in the comments and I will start giving you your homework. Angie Neal says SEO for beginners. Nice one. Hey, let me know when you've, here we go. Let me know when you've done that course, Angie. I'll buy it from you. <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone's saying yes, yes, yes. Get on with it. Get on with it. Get on with it. Start giving us your homework. All right. Beautiful. Cool, cool. Love it. So here we go. Here's, here's your homework for today. Because what I've learned over the years is the best way to create successful online courses, there really are, there's really two phases to this. One is there's no point wasting any time creating something that somebody doesn't, that nobody wants, right? And we, as I said, we've just been through that story that I, that I walked you through. We've done that. Please don't do that. Please don't create anything that people don't want. So, so the way to flip that on its head is to actually get people to buy your online course before you create it. <gasps> now, I know I just felt like Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. Um, I know that's a crazy idea, right, to get people to buy your online course before you create it. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it. Don't freak out. It's not that scary. Uh, and I'm here to hold your hand every step of the way. So rule number one, uh, uh, sell your online course, get people to buy the online course before you create it, okay? Rule number two is don't create it without them. Create it with the people who have bought it. <laughs> I know, it's just, it's it's a radical idea. And a lot of you are thinking, well, how the hell do you do that? How do you get someone to buy something that you haven't built and then get them to build it? It's 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 a, it's a bit of a it's a complete flip of the mentality and the approach. The reason this works is because it gets you unstuck from the two things that will get you stuck. One is what do we put in the course? Well, you don't need to decide that because your customers are going to tell you. And two, well, now that I've made the course, how do I sell it? Well, you don't. That's not going to happen because you're going to you're not actually going to make it until you sell it. Okay. So, how do we do this? Because this is all great in theory, but I'm not here for infotainment. I'm not here. This is not this is not academia. This is the real world, and I want you guys to get some traction. So here's how we do it. Here's your first piece of homework. The first thing you need to think about is where are people when they are going to join your course? And I don't mean I don't mean where they are in the world, and I don't necessarily mean where they are with your skill set. So for example, Angie Neal. If you are talking about starting a SEO for beginners course, what you need to understand is where is a student when they come to you and they're about to enroll in your course, what are the characteristics of a complete beginner? And I will encourage you not just to think about their characteristics in terms of your subject matter. So not just where are they in terms of SEO, but where are they in their life journey? right? Where, like, what is the big frustration that they have? And why are they thinking about learning SEO? What is it that they're trying to solve? What's the problem they're trying to solve? Or what are they trying to achieve? And imagine they're a complete beginner, because here's the thing, you, it's impossible to pitch your training at people at all different levels. 
So you have to make an assumption that everyone is starting from ground zero. So your course should be designed in a way, your curriculum should be designed in a way that it appeals to the and, and helps the complete beginner, right? I'll ask my tradie group today, Angie, love it. Love that you've got a group. So what are the characteristics of a complete beginner? And then what are the characteristics of a rock star? What are the characteristics of someone who's going to go through your course and come out the other side and go, yeah, baby, I'm killing it. What are the characteristics there? Let's unpack this for a second, right, with SEO. Complete beginner when it comes to SEO, they're probably frustrated that they're not getting enough traffic to their website and they're not making enough sales or generating enough leads for their business. So if you're targeting tradies, Angie, it would be like, you know, plumbers going, I am sick of cleaning people's and unblocking people's toilets. I want to do more interesting work. How do I get the more interesting work coming into my uh, my business rather than just getting the emergency call that, you know, someone's had too many wheat bix for breakfast and now their toilet's blocked, right? So that might be the big frustration. Well, I've got this website and I'm just not getting the leads. That's the frustration, right? SEO is just the vehicle that's going to help them go from where they are now, frustrated, complete beginner, to rock star, which is, man, I've got so many leads coming into my website. I've had to hire more people and I'm actually now just referring clients off to my friends because I'm at capacity. That's the characteristic of a rock star, okay? And what is your transformation? Here we go. What are the characteristics of a complete beginner when they start working with you? What are the characteristics of a rock star once they've been working with you for 90 days or however long it takes? And then what transformation will your online course offer them? And let me just scratch that one a little deeper. A transformation is, generally speaking, not about the thing. So it's not about SEO. So you don't want to say, well, you know, um, working with me, you're going to have a website that is optimized for search engines and comes up on Google and <laughs> nobody cares, right? The transformation is what what is different between the beginner and the rock star, okay? And the whole purpose of this is for you to come up with is his, your assignment, you've got an assignment and some homework. Your assignment is this. Your assignment is to come up with a unique value proposition for your online course or your online training or your boot camp or whatever you call it. A unique value proposition for your online course. And here is the framework for your unique value proposition, okay? Here it is. I'm going to leave it up on the screen for a few seconds longer so you can take a screenshot or write it down. And then I'm going to give you a, a Google Doc in a moment. <gasps> that you can copy and paste and you can just start testing this thing in the real world. <gasps> hey, I hope you're as scared as I am. I'm giving you everything you need here so that you can take action. I don't want to hear any excuses. So here is your unique value proposition framework. Read this if you want to blah without blah. Okay. So for example, my friend Nev Harris teaches freelancers how to get their shit together when it comes to their personal finances. So his value proposition, but he always promises to, to leave out the boring bits. So his value proposition would be, read this if you want to understand your finances without the boring bits. Now, you don't need a without statement. It's just it's just better if you've got one. Uh, and it's usually like the thing that's getting in the way of them doing it. So for example, with the SEO, it might be, if you're a tradie, read this if you want more leads from your website without being overwhelmed by boring technical stuff. Now, if you don't have a without, you can use a time frame. So you can say, read this if you want to. <clears throat> so say, for example, Nev didn't have the boring bits thing. He might say, read this if you want to understand your personal finances in the next 90 days. Or read this if you want to get a handle on your personal finances in the next 90 days without all the boring bits. That's a really good UVP because it's promising exactly what it is they're going to deliver in a specific time frame without the thing that most people think when it comes to this. Uh, do you want to learn how to get more leads from your website? Yeah, but I'm not technical, man, and I don't understand all that stuff. Cool. So if you're a tradie, read this if you want more leads from your website in the next 90 days without all the boring technical stuff or without all the overwhelm. Without the overwhelm is like my go-to statement if I can't think of something better, okay? So I'm going to share a Google Doc with you, and then I'm going to give you the link to that Google Doc so that you can just go and grab it. I'm going to show you some examples, and I'm going to give you your homework, okay? 
So let me just share my screen here for a second and show you. Here we go. There we go. Yay. Here we go. Here is your homework. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a link to this Google Doc, so don't worry. You don't need to uh, copy and paste it right now. I'm going to give you this link, okay? And here's your homework. Your homework is to is to test your unique value proposition and validate your idea for your online course by getting at least 10 people to raise their hands and express interest in your online course or training or bootcamp or challenge or whatever you want to call it, right? So here, let me just walk you through how this works. If you can either use this in social media, so if you have a Facebook group like Angie Neal does, or my wife does, got a fantastic group of early career psychologists, Sarah, hint, hint. Uh, this <clears throat> is, um, my wife's name is not Sarah, by the way, just for those of you who might've been confused. Uh, Sarah will know what I'm talking about. So use this in a Facebook group that you have. Uh, or if you don't have a Facebook group, just use it on LinkedIn or stick it on your Facebook profile or use this wherever you've got an audience. If you go to BNI, you can stand up and read this out at a BNI breakfast. I don't care. Wherever you've got a, wherever you've got people who you think might be interested, use this, okay? So if you're going to use it on social media, here is the post here. Here is the example. Here's the template, and then I'm going to give you an example. The template is this. Read this if you want to achieve outcome without usual thing getting in the way. And then they're like, okay. So Angie Neal would be, tradies, read this if you want to, whatever, without the technical boring stuff. I'm looking, and so they're like, okay, they're ready to read it. Then what do they read? Well, you have to give them something to read. So here's a post. I'm looking for a small group of people to work with me over the next, whatever, 90 days, who want to achieve outcome, transformation of your training, right? So if you're, so for example, you'd say, I'm looking for a small group of tradies to work with me over the next 90 days who want to get more leads from their website without any technical boring stuff. So if you're, and then what you do here is you describe your ideal person, right? So you might say, for example, so if you're an exi so if you're a tradie and you've been in business for more than three years, because you might just not want to work with like complete newbies who are just starting out and thinking about starting their own business as a plumber, they might not be right for you, right? So describe your ideal person here. You're 100% committed to getting results. This basically this year is where you just describe your ideal student. So you might say, uh, if you're a tradie with an existing website, are 100% committed to getting results for your customers, are willing to make an investment in yourself, that pre-frames the fact that it's not going to be free, right? And you're friendly and coachable, leave a comment with I'm in, leave a comment below with I'm in, and I'll DM you the details in Messenger, right? Leave a comment with below with I'm in, and I'll DM you the details. Now, don't panic, because we're going to hang out tomorrow. So if anyone does that, I'll just tell you what to do tomorrow. Okay, so you don't need to, you don't need to worry about what to do right now. I'll just tell you what to do tomorrow. If someone says I'm in, I'll tell you what to do. So here's my example, right? Uh, and this is my example for this the course creators blueprint, right? This is what I say. Read this if you want to turn your expertise into a highly lucrative online course without the overwhelm. I'm looking for a small group of people to work with me over the next ninety days who want to turn their knowledge into a valuable online course they can sell over and over again. Because I know that most people who want to create an online course are looking for some kind of leveraged income. They've got knowledge and expertise and experience in their head, and they're sick of trading time for money. They want some way to teach the thing once and get paid multiple times. That's why that sentence is there, right? So if you're, and I just work particularly well with people who fit this criteria, if you're a coach, consultant, educator, trainer, or author, are 100% committed to getting results, are willing to make an investment in yourself and are friendly and coachable, leave a comment below with I'm in and I'll DM you the details in Messenger, okay? Now, if you hate social media <clears throat> and you don't want to do this on social media, but you happen to have an email list, by the way, if you don't have an email list, the best time to start collecting emails was yesterday. The second best time is tomorrow. No, it's not. It's today, of course. Once you've done this, then the next best thing, the next uh, thing you should do is start collecting emails from your website or from your Facebook groups. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, during the Course Creators Blueprint because uh, we've got a whole training on that. So if you do this on email, it would just look like this. Hey, first name, right? And whatever program you use to drop their first name in, you just use the merge field there for first name, right? Hey, first name. If you want to achieve blah, right? It's all the same. 
uh, without usual thing getting in the way, this might be the best email you receive this week. Why? Uh, by the way, that's like straight out of the David Ogilvy copywriting school, right? So I, I can't take credit for inventing this stuff uh, because I'm looking for a small group of people to work with me over the next 90 days who want to achieve outcome. So if you're A and it's exactly the same, just reply to this email with the words, I'm in and I'll send you the details. So it's exactly the same framework, just a different mechanism because we're using email, not social media. So again, here's my example. Hey, Paul, if you want to turn your expertise into a highly lucrative online course without the overwhelm, this might be the best email you receive this week. Why? Because I'm looking for a small group of people to work with me over the next 90 days who want to turn their knowledge into a valuable online course they can sell over and over again. So if you're a blah, 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 just reply to this email with the words, I'm in, and I'll send you the details. Okay. Does this make sense? <clears throat> and... Uh, what I want to know now is if you're in, say I'm in <laughs> and I'll give you the link to this Google Doc so you can just go and grab it and copy and paste it, okay? So just say I'm in in the comments <laughs> and I'll give you the link to the Google Doc in the comments. You'll have to chase the comments because, um, yes, Angie says I've been collecting their email addresses for years too, waiting for the right opportunity. Boom! Well done. Well done, Angie Neal. You're a legend. Uh, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Everyone's in. Excellent. So here is a link to the Google Doc. I'm just going to drop it in the comments here. So you'll need to be quick to grab it because the comments might fly. Actually, do I have it on the screen? I think I might even have it on the screen. Ooh. But here it is here, okay? WPlinks.io slash CCB01. Oh, hang on. The Facebook counter just went up. Yes, 14,209 now. That blue thing right there behind me on top of the fireplace is a Facebook counter connected to our Facebook page. And every time it goes up, it uh, cycles and shows us how many fans we have. And sometimes it goes down. Not sure why. Okay, so here's your homework. Uh, let me just unshare my screen here. There we go. And let's come back here and go, boo. Yes. Cool. So your homework is to validate your idea by proving there are 10 people interested in your course. wplinks.io slash ccb01 is the link to the Google Doc. Just go and grab that, copy and paste it, use it on social media or send an email. And I want to see screenshots tomorrow of... 10 comments, I'm in, or replies in your inbox. Please blur out people's details when you take a screenshot. I don't want to see people's email addresses here live on Facebook, but I do want to see screenshots of your comments or people responding to your email because that will go a long way, my friends, to counting towards your points to win the iPad Pro at the end of the week. See how it's all coming together. And we've only been here for 43 minutes. It's going to be a fantastic week. I'm going to take some questions in a minute. But before we get there, I just want to tease you again. We are giving away an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil this week. They're a fantastic thing. I love my iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil. And so does Oscar. He's three and he's figured out how to color in uh, on the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. He comes in every now and then. He says, Dad, can I draw on your iPad? And we have lots of fun hanging out, drawing on the iPad. So uh, that is going to the most engaged creator, course creator this week in the challenge. And uh, the homework that I've given you is going to go a long way to getting you points towards winning that iPad. By the way, there's no leaderboard. There's no points. I'm just all going off gut feel, right? So the more active and engaged you are uh, and the more results you get and the more action you take, then the more likely you are to win. If you turn up, you've got to turn up every day and you've got to turn up, be here Friday when we give it away. All right, I'm going to take some questions in a moment, but first of all, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to use the, the workbook template that we've given you in Canva. I'm going to open up Canva and show you how to use it. And I'm going to show you how to build world-class workbooks and then how to use them to drive sales for your online course. <laughs> So exciting, isn't it? It is so exciting. I'm so excited. And then 
uh, day three, Wednesday here in Australia, Dan and Molestaff hanging out with us, and then Dave Foy hanging out with us on Thursday live to answer any questions about how they have turned their expertise and their knowledge into online courses. Uh, and uh, you'll get a you'll get a great opportunity to actually ask them questions about how they run their business and how they've done what they've done. Tina Hughes says, that's right, don't forget to make a copy of the Google Doc. So that Google Doc at wplinks.io slash ccb01, you can probably just copy and paste the text straight off that Google Doc, but if you want to edit it, then you need to make a copy and save it into your own uh, I, at your own Google Drive account, right, so that you can edit it. Um, all right, I'm going to take some questions. Who has got some questions? I'm, going to, I'm happy to hang out here for about another, I don't know, five minutes or so, and I'm going to take some questions, and then I'm going to bounce out of here and go and enjoy my day in lockdown while there's no daycare and we have a full house of kids and everything, all that good stuff. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any questions while we're here. And also just a quick reminder, uh, if you want the workbook delivered to you via Facebook Messenger, go on over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash WP Elevation and leave a comment with the word workbook to get your free workbook template sent to you via Facebook Messenger. And then of course, come back here to the group and watch the live stream in the group uh, because, you know, I just think it's more fun hanging out in the group. Uh, but Unfortunately, we can't scrape comments from a group because Cambridge Analytica screwed it all up for us back uh, during the 2016 election or whatever election it was, the 2018 election, or whatever election it was that Trump won. It all got screwed up for us and our people and their privacy issues, we can't uh, uh, automate the comments in the group, so we have to do it on the page, I know. Here we go. Tina Hughes says, are you able to show us how you set up the Facebook auto process you set up for the first doc. You mean the workbook? Is that right, Tina? The uh, the workbook, it's, a, it's basically a many chat automation, right? Super, super simple. It's a many chat automation uh, using what's, it's using a growth tool, um, uh, using what's called, I think it's called a comment guard, right? A comment guard. I, I'm not going to dive into our mini chat account because I'm not allowed in there because every time I log in, I break stuff, right? But what I will do is I'll show you this. I think it's called a mini chat comment guard. Here we go. I'm just going to give you the link. Uh, let, let me just share my screen. Here we go. I'll share my screen and I'm going to share. Mm, I'm going to share this one. Here we go. Shows you how to do it right here. It's called Facebook Comments Growth Tool in ManyChat. Okay, so follow this uh, here. Uh, why don't I stick the link in the comments? There we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Way too much fun. Uh, what basically what happens is you program it so that if anyone leaves a comment with a particular word, you then ping them via ManyChat. Right, you ask them to double confirm and absolutely triple confirm that they want to receive the stuff. They subscribe to your many chat bot in Messenger so that you can continue to notify them when you go live, and they can then you can ask them to confirm their email address and their phone number. I believe we ask for your phone number as well because many chat now does SMS reminders, which is super cool. Once they've confirmed their phone number and their email address, you send them a link to the workbook which we just host anywhere, doesn't matter. You can just host it in the WordPress media library, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can ha have it as a Google Drive link, a shared Google Drive link, doesn't matter. And then we grab their email address and we uh, pipe it into a spreadsheet. And then we uh, can also pipe that into our email marketing platform, whether you use MailChimp or uh, you know Infusionsoft or ActiveCampaign, whatever you use. And then you can just start emailing people. Um, and uh, that's how we do it. We use many chat Facebook comments. It doesn't work in groups, Angie. It does not work in groups, right? Because um, basically what happened is in 2016, this company called Cambridge Analytica scraped the Facebook database and collected like a gazillion profiles on people who were in groups because the groups API, the Facebook groups API was open. And so they kind of went in there and just scraped like all this data out of the Facebook database and used it to do hyper, hyper targeting 
uh, hyper-targeted advertising campaigns for the Republican Party. And there was a huge furor over it. In fact, there's a great documentary called um, uh, The Great Hack, I think it's called. Is it The Great Hack? And it's a fantastic documentary, right? It's called The Great Hack. It's a documentary on Netflix. Go watch it. You'll probably never use Facebook again if you watch it. <laughs> yes, everyone did it. That's right. The Democrats did it as well. The Republicans just did it way better. And um, uh, and uh, Cambridge Analytica was the company behind it. And so watch The Great Hack and it talks all about it. Anyway, so after that, what happened is Facebook closed their group's API. So you can't get stuff in and out of the Facebook groups. You need to be a lot, uh, a lot more explicit with permissions these days, which is why the Facebook comments growth tool in many chat doesn't work in groups okay it only works on a facebook page all right um i'm a marketing here's a question from facebook user who hasn't given us permission to use their name and photo on the on the uh live stream which is fine so here's the comment i'm a marketing startup and building out my website now will i need my website to have a login and course education page or can this be done with a platform such as adobe training that's a fantastic question and I'm going to answer that question later in the week. I'm not going to answer that question right now. I'm going to answer that question later in the week. But I can tell you this. You do not need a website to have a login and course education pages to create and launch your first or next course. Okay? Controversial, I know. But you do not need a website to, uh, with logins and all that fancy stuff to create your next or first course. Okay? Uh, so don't waste time doing any of that stuff, okay? Um, a fabulous way to get emails from Facebook, clever possum. Thanks, Tina. Now, there are also some Chrome extensions. Don't want to send you down too much of a rabbit hole, but there are some Chrome extensions that you can use to get email addresses out of a Facebook group, okay? Uh, not really the topic of this conversation, but there are. there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, just because... There's more than one way to skin a cat. I've been saying this for quite a few years since I scunned the last cat. Uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So just because there are more than uh, there is more than one way to get email addresses from a Facebook group doesn't mean you should. Okay. Um, just going to leave that one with you. Ben says setup looks great, brother. Thanks, Ben. Oh, the other question that we get, the other question that I will answer later in the week is what gear do you use? What gear do you need? What gear do you need to create an online course in terms of like the cameras and the microphones and all that fancy stuff? Well, let me just say this. You do not need one thirtieth of the shit that I have, okay? So please do not look at the stuff that I'm doing and go, well, we need those fancy cameras and with those shallow depths of field lenses and we need those fancy radio microphones that make it sound like you're on the radio and we need those funny little in-ear headphone things that he's got in his ears and we need the thing where he pushes the button and he gets the fancy sounds. You don't need any of this stuff, all right? You do not need any of this stuff, okay? You don't. Trust me, I'll tell you what you need later in the week, okay? Uh, gear needed. One human and one way to film. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, you don't even need a way to film, really. Um, we'll talk about more about that later on in the week. Uh, what questions do you have? Any other questions? Otherwise, I'm about to bounce out of here. And just a reminder, tomorrow I'm going to walk you through how to start filling in your workbook and how to use your workbook to start uh, getting – uh, to start uh, your your sales and marketing engine for your course. How to create world-class workbooks and how to use your workbook as the sales and marketing engine for your next course launch, okay? Uh, that's coming up tomorrow. And remember, excuse me, remember we are giving away an iPad Pro this week. On Friday, I'm giving away an iPad Pro, brand new, not not my crusty secondhand one here. Brand new iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil, right? Which is, you know, one of these really fancy styluses, yeah, to draw on the on the Apple, on the iPad Pro, right? Giving away uh, one of these kits uh, on Friday for the most engaged course creator for the week. 
Um, I can tell you this much. If anyone happens to sell their course this week during this challenge, they're probably going to win, right? I'll just That's a big hint, all right? If you happen to make a sale, I don't, like as long as it's not for $5, if you happen to make a decent sale, let's say 197 bucks. If anyone sells their course for $197 during this challenge this week, it's going to be pretty hard to beat that, right? So um, uh, I hope that uh, that helps. And Ben says, I need the hair. Hey, this is not a bad COVID haircut by my wife. Hey, my wife cut my hair yesterday uh, in the bathroom. Not a bad job. Not a bad COVID haircut from uh, from the old wife. All right, fantastic. I'm going to leave you guys with it. This has been super, super fun. Remember, tomorrow, same time, same channel in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and on our Facebook page. Uh, your homework is to use the post, use that Google Doc that I gave you, use that post, start uh, Amy Hall says, I'm going to sell the hell out of my course. That's what I like, Amy Hall. Yeah, baby. Bit of healthy competition. Bring it on. Right? Uh, yep, we should get a choice. What do you mean? What are you talking about, Angie? Yep, there is, of course, how to repair COVID haircuts. Oh, Ray Miladoni. Thanks for coming, hey? <laughs> Love you, brother. Hope you're coping. Yep, we should get a choice. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? You should get a choice. What are you talking about? Not sure. Um, so uh, anyway, tomorrow, let's do it again, right? Same time, same channel. Digital Mavericks Facebook group, WP Elevation Facebook page. You guys are awesome. This has been super fun. Take the post that I've given you and do the bloody homework because otherwise this is all academic, which is fun for me, but not great for you, okay? So just... Hit the ground running, use the post to start validating. And remember, your mission is to get 10 people to put their hand up and go, I'm interested in the course. 10 people to put their hand up and go, I'm interested in the course, right? WP Elevation, not interested now, only wanted the crusty old iPad. Oh, oh, well, you sure. Look, if you want the crusty, I'll take the new one and you can have the, that's what you're talking about, Angie. You can have my crusty old one, okay, with all my fingerprints, yeah, and my crumbs on it. And I'll take the new one, okay? All right. Love your work. Have a great day, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, keep the conversation going. I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, take that post. Do your homework. I want to see screenshots of people saying I'm in or reply emails, okay? I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.